So welcome to Adding Value to Local Food. Barry Nash is with us from North Carolina Sea Grant. He's the Seafood Technology and Marketing Specialist. And he maintains an economic development program for the North Carolina seafood industry that addresses new product commercialization, manufacturing, regulatory compliance, and direct marketing. Barry has spent 12 years in various private sector research and development positions before joining Sea Grant, and his industry expertise and connections were instrumental in the development of Carteret Catch, a joint educational initiative between Carteret County fishermen and restaurants to raise public awareness of local seafood and of commercial fishing. Well, thanks, Joanna, and welcome, everybody. What I'd like to do before I get started with my presentation is I just would like to recap what Annette and Gary have said. Before investing any time and money in a value-added product, please know the needs and expectations of your target customers so that you can design a product that's going to satisfy those demands better than your competition. And as Gary noted, in general, consumers are searching for value-added foods that have health benefits, taste appeal, and definitely ready to cook or ready to eat convenience right out of the package because people just don't have the time or the desire to cook at home anymore. You also need to decide if the product uh, that you're going to make is best suited for shelf-stable, refrigerated, or frozen distribution contingent on the needs of your target customer. And as Annette mentioned, please know where you're going to best find that target customer. Are you going to reach them online through farmer's markets? Can you reach them best through the grocery trade? Or do you need to reach them through bulk distributors like Cisco Foods? Each of these considerations is really going to influence your product development process. So before you come to me, please talk with an NCBA business specialist like Annette who can help you assess the cost of investing in your product and the anticipated returns. So once you decide on a product concept that's going to be potentially profitable, what you want to do is develop a standard formulation and evaluate its appeal. An inexpensive way for doing this is to do sensory test or taste test uh, with your company personnel or with friends. Sensory ballots like the one you see here are available for North Carolina Sea Grant. What individuals are going to do is they're going to rate the flavor, texture, aroma, and appearance of your product on a scale from 1 to 10, where 1 equals terrible and 7 equals excellent. And you want to encourage your sensory participants to comment on what they like and dislike about the product and why, because that information, in addition to the scores, is going to help you remedy any deficiencies that your panelists identify in your product. You can conduct some larger scale commercial evaluations. Uh, the Sensory Center at NC State University would be the best recommendation. Um, they do fee for service, so you're going to need to contact them directly to schedule a consultation to learn more about the services that they provide. But what we would recommend here is, is that you, uh, in the early stages of your development, that you do your sensory work on your own. So once you're satisfied with your recipe, you can begin to focus on your manufacturing. You can start by converting that recipe into a formulation, and to do this, Weigh the ingredients in your recipe so that you can convert U.S. measurements like tablespoons, cups, and ounces into metric units, and then calculate the percentage that each ingredient contributes to the entire recipe by dividing the weight of an, of an ingredient by the total weight of all the ingredients in your recipe, and then multiply by 100. Because you're going to use this formulation for batching on a production level and for when you start your commercial manufacturing. You may need some special ingredients to enhance your product shelf life or its nutritional and sensory qualities. Uh, an example of this would be lactic and acetic acids. They are used to suppress the growth of spoilage bacteria in refrigerated foods, lengthening the shelf life. So for more information on what we call functional ingredients, see the resources given in the value-added uh, publication that's going to be presented at the end of this webinar, or contact your county extension agent or North Carolina Sea Grant. At this stage, we do encourage you to enter your ingredient levels and your prices into a spreadsheet so you can calculate how adjustments to your formulation are going to alter your manufacturing costs. You should track these costs against your target retail costs throughout your development. And again, staying in close contact with your NCDA business specialist, you want to make sure that you're reaching a profit margin that will make your product commercially successful. So at this phase, the goal of your development uh, is to make adjustments to your formulation and your manufacturing processes to ensure that you can mass produce your product 
in a way that doesn't sacrifice its superior sensory qualities. Several two-scale tests or production trials, as we call them, may be needed to verify that your production methods are delivering the highest yields of saleable product. If you don't have any processing capacity, then consider, as Annette has mentioned already, a shared-use kitchen. These are the operations that will furnish you equipment to mass manufacture your product for commercial distribution. You can find a link to these facilities in the Adding Value publication, or you, know, you can contact your uh, county extension office. You can also uh, contract with a co-packer, which are established food businesses that will process and package your product according to your manufacturing, quality control, and safety specifications. As Inez already mentioned, they are expensive. However, if you want more time to devote to distribution and sales, they may be of benefit to you. Uh, guidance on selecting that can be found in the value-added uh, publication. If you're going to construct or you want to upgrade your facility to manufacture new products, then I would recommend you consult with North Carolina Department of Ag's Food and Drug Protection Division. The consultations they offer are free to North Carolina businesses, and the contact information for the division is in the Adding Value publication. You're likely going to make some very significant process adjustments that enhance your manufacturing efficiencies. That's your goal. But to ensure that these adjustments don't harm the desirable sensory qualities of your product, we recommend you conduct informal sensory evaluations as described earlier. Because the goal here is to incrementally improve manufacturing proficiencies without sacrificing the desirable sensory qualities that are going to make your product appealing to your target consumer. Once you believe you've achieved a production formulation that meets your cost and target qualities, the next thing you want to do is a shelf life evaluation, which is what you're going to do to determine how long it takes before your product becomes unfit to eat. And this is important for determining what a proper sell-by date should be. In my opinion, a good shelf life test is going to assess both the sensory and the microbiological changes that are going to occur in your product over time. So for more discussion on this, give us a call at North Carolina Sea Grant. The next thing you're going to want to do is comply with state and federal safety regulations, such as uh, hazard analysis and critical control point food safety rule. That helps processors identify where in their manufacturing they can prevent, eliminate, or reduce to an acceptable level any hazard that can make food unsafe to eat. But even if you don't or your product doesn't fall under HACCP, all processors are going to need a sanitation program to ensure that food handling practices throughout their facilities will not contaminate food. If you're going to manufacture your product at a co-packer, that business is going to be responsible for the regulatory requirements. But if you're going to manufacture, be sure to fully understand and assess the cost of regulatory compliance and include them in your business plan. So to learn more about safety rules and sanitation regimes, again, contact NCDA's Food and Drug Protection Division or contact your county extension office. The other steps that you want to go through is develop processing quality control and product safety specifications. I've worked with people who seem to skip this step, and I think it's important that you have it written down exactly how you want your product to be produced. Because whether you're working with your own employees or you're working with contract employees, you don't want anybody making decisions online uh, that in a way that could harm the quality or the safety of your product. So have these written down so that people know exactly how to manufacture that product the way you want it manufactured. And you're going to also need to develop nutritional profiles and conduct a label review. As Annette said, that, uh, that service is offered by the North Carolina State University's Food Bioprocessing and Nutrition Sciences Department. And once you've done that, you're ready to conduct or start planning your market introduction. And as Annette has already said, you're going to want a website to provide your target customers with information about your company and what makes your company unique and where your product can be purchased. Now, if you're going to sell through grocery chains or distributors, buyers are going to want to review sales literature prior to meeting with you in person. Because buyers are tasked with learning if new items will be a good fit with their existing product lines or if those products are going to meet specific consumer needs. So we recommend that you develop a sales brochure that features a photo and a brief description of your product or your products. 
We want you to make sure that you include the brand name, the type of packaging, the shipping case dimensions, and pricing, because all that information is what buyers are going to want to review whether they have a face-to-face -face meeting with you. So for more information on how to do that, please contact your county extension office or NCDA's marketing division or North Carolina Sea Grant. And if you need specific uh, technical assistance or guidance in developing value-added products, here's my contact information. Thank you very much, Barry. So I had posted into the uh, chat box just a little bit earlier the adding value to local food publication.